Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Salting the Souls of the Hollow Men. The Hollow Men. We are the Hollow Men. We are the stuffed men, leaning together, headpiece filled with straw, alas. Our dried voices, when we whisper together, are quiet and meaningless as wind in dry grass, or rats' feet over broken glass in our dry cellar. Shape without form, shade without color, paralyzed force, gesture without motion. Those who have crossed with direct eyes to death's other kingdom, remember us, if at all, not as lost, violent souls, but only as the hollow men, the stuffed men. You are listening to poet T.S. Eliot reciting his great poem, The Hollow Men, written in 1925 in response to the aftermath of World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, which he despised and thought unfair. Now, a hundred years later, T.S. Eliot's words still sting the ear and sear the heart, while seasoning expectation. Because what he knew then is what we, my human meme friend, are forced to know and to kneel to now. Yes, we are run by the hollow. We are threatened by the soulless and by those who demand adherence to their plan of wealth and power. Power and wealth. Only for them and for other hollow men like them. The public good be damned. America is crumbling in the streets, and it is these hollow men, hollow men who purposefully led us to the edge of the depths, these hollow men who purposefully dragged us through the gaslighting, these hollow men who purposefully fueled our gassing, and who purposefully misled us deep into the pit of the fire of helplessness and consternation. Yes, all purposeful. Yes, all performed with no excuses provided. Then it changed. The hollow men became visible. Oh, sure, people would still have been upset with the death of George Floyd. But the unutterable hard reality is this. Black men are killed every day by the police. Somewhere in the world. Every single day. Every single minute of every day. But this American killing of George Floyd was different. Why? It was because of among other things, the apt inaction of the federal government for months in their apt refusal to immediately respond to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. Instead of proactively protecting the people of this nation, the federal government instead chose to squander weeks and then months, in pretending to compete with a feasible defense against the outbreak. And then what happened? People lost their jobs. People were put at home. People were isolated and fed up and angry. And the people wanted out. The people wanted change. And then what happened? The advocates of the hollow men, some rogue police, 
murdered George Floyd before our eyes on live television over and over and over. And the people stuck at home were bored. And then when they saw George Floyd, they were outraged. And they wanted to get out and get up. And then the people took to the streets. The people protested the killing of George Floyd. And the people objected to the impasse of their own lives. The people had nothing else to do. The people had nowhere else to go. George Floyd rose up and gave the people permission and a reason to rise up and to finally fight back. Yes, fight back against the hollow. Being in quarantine creates time and space for contemplation and reflection. And that sort of thinking is really dangerous to the common core and the status quo of these hollow men. And they reply upon that control to maintain their power. And the dead moments in a day in quarantine are susceptible to action, to break the bonds of boredom, shattered by outrage and revenge and a want for duty and a need for a higher morality. But the hollow men could not predict the lengths the people would go to salvage the remains of their souls before it was too late and how much people needed to save their dreams the dreams of the people, the dreams of black lives that were all gambled against each other for centuries, soon to be lost forever, teetering to be wagered and then given up to the hollow men, lost because the salted soul has no bearing on the living and the salted soul only has a taste for the dead and the dying. For the salted soul is already stepping into the grave and grows more fallow with each dying breath in the hollow. You cannot beg a demon for salvation. Eyes I dare not meet in dreams, in death's dream kingdom, these do not appear. There the eyes are sunlight on a broken column. There is a tree swinging, and voices are in the wind singing, more distant and more solemn than a fading star. Let me be no nearer in death's dream kingdom. Let me also wear such deliberate disguises, rat's coat, crowskin, crossed staves in a field, behaving as the wind behaves, no nearer. Not that final meeting in the twilight kingdom. And so, the people stood up in the streets to no longer be ignored. They took on their own repression. They stood up to fight and to march and to protest and to be heard and to be noticed. And George Floyd gave them every human reason to excuse the need to get change in their lives moving forward by any means necessary. And this, my human meme friend, is what happens when the hollow men, dreamless, spiritless, and tied only to money and power. Underestimate the willpower of the people to be heard and to be respected and to be taken into full account in the public square. This revolution of mind is what freedom sounds like. 
and what freedom feels like, and what freedom stings like. And yes, it's a painful process to fight through the darkness and push into the light of belonging to something bigger than a bank account and a flimsy title printed on a desk name plate. This is the dead land. This is cactus land. Here the stone images are raised. Here they receive the supplication of a dead man's hand under the twinkle of a fading star. Is it like this in death's other kingdom? Waking alone at the hour when we are trembling with tenderness, lips that would kiss form prayers to broken stone. What these dead and dreamless and eyeless hollow men cannot comprehend is that we are not like them, and we do not want to be them, unsighted and groping in an ocean filled with the bitter tears of others. Now, we stand against everything that makes a hollow man. Life is real and sturdy and brittle and broken, and that's the beauty of it. That's the only way we the people can survive in a world run by the faint-hearted and the scarred. The faint-hearted and the scarred little men who hide behind military barricades in a park and the little men who mount horses to draw blood in the street, and the little men who send Red Cross helicopters to overwash people down below, who are merely standing up for their right to speak, while the tops of the trees above them are bitten off in spite. Oh, yes. We survive against these hollow men because we need something to press back against in order for us all to breathe free and die good and young. Oh, yes, we all want to breathe. Oh, yes, we all want to get the government off our necks because we are all dying of suffocation and the pressed ignorance of the hollow men, and we're fed up with being bullied by dumber, more cruel people whose only claim, so they claim, whose only claim to their status above us are the rings on their thumbs and the gold in their pockets. The eyes are not here. There are no eyes here in this valley of dying stars, in this hollow valley, this broken jaw of our lost kingdoms. In this last of meeting places, we grope together and avoid speech gathered on this beach of the tumid river, sightless unless the eyes reappear as the perpetual star multifoliate rose of death's twilight kingdom, the hope only of empty men. In the year 1599, William Shakespeare wrote this to us, for us, in his play, Julius Caesar. Act Two, Scene One. Between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream. The genius and the mortal instruments are then in council, and the state of man, like to a little kingdom, suffers then the nature 
of an insurrection. Here we go round the prickly pear, prickly pear, prickly pear. Here we go round the prickly pear at five o'clock in the morning. Between the idea and the reality, between the motion and the act, falls the shadow, for thine is the kingdom. Between the conception and the creation, between the emotion and the response, falls the shadow. Life is very long. Between the desire and the spasm, between the potency and the existence, between the essence and the descent, falls the shadow, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is, life is, for thine is the, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang but a whimper. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.